Business is tough, and today I'm really feeling the pinch. So with the ongoing recession in Canada, we've really felt the pinch in the grocery store business. The prices are going higher and higher, and a lot of our customers are trying to find the lowest prices at the big box stores. And to be open and honest with you guys, over the last six years, there have been days that I felt like closing the doors for good and going to get a regular job. There's nothing wrong with a regular job, just not for me. And for the love that you've shown me on this channel for the last six years, I'm gonna pull back the curtain today and really reveal what it's been like to be a small business owner during this recession or weird time that we're having in 2023. And I want to thank you guys for supporting this channel. We're almost at 8,000 subscribers. If you can help us get us get there, I would really, really appreciate it. And I want to thank you guys for tickling my fancy and spending 10 minutes with me today. More like 15 because I like to ramble. And in this video, I'm going to tell you my painful regrets or a wake up call to small business owners. <laughs> And making this video not to discourage anybody but to show you the exact reality that comes with owning a business so usually people have this expectation that they're sailing on a boat in France because they're business owners and they have multiple vacations a year they can just work five to ten hours a week but the reality is very different than that you are most likely going to be working many more hours than your nine to five you're going to be much more attached and emotional to this business because it legitimately is like having another baby. So digital.com explained that in 2021, 5 million businesses were opened and that more than half of Americans want to start a business at some point in their life. So it really begs the question as to why business ownership and entrepreneurship it is such a highly sought after feat and why it's so glamorized in the media and social media in you know pretty much every magazine that you can come across being a business owner seems to be the way that most people either try to achieve or want to achieve so this video and this channel was all about being transparent and open as possible to show you guys the reality of what it was like to own multiple businesses over the last six years, see Felicia start her new business as a real estate agent, and all the trials and tribulations that come with it without the glamour that you see on Instagram. So these are my biggest mistakes or things I wish I knew before opening my businesses. Number one. It is a 24 seven hour gig. You do not turn off, you do not shut off. There's no punching out. There's no getting away for you know multiple spans of time like many of you will think. Maybe eventually that can happen and 99% of people have you know a journey to get to that level and it's possible. But I want to be clear, this is not the reality for when you first start. You will spend many sleepless nights. You will spend many nights working on your business. You will spend a lot of time discussing where things went wrong or how to do things better. There's legitimately a thousand things to always do. Even if you knock off one thing, there's another storm waiting for you in the next few days. There's always a fire to put out and it all relies on you. For example, if our cooler breaks down at the store, you know, as an employee, we just shut the door, call the manager, call the owner, and they would have to take care of it. For Felicia and I, if anything like that happens, we have to deal with the product loss, the financial loss, getting it refixed, waiting for people on a day off to come and fix it. It's a whole different process. For the first few years, you will work harder than you ever have for very, very little money. And to be honest, you may not make any money for the first few years because you're growing a business that constantly needs reinvestment. There's not another job on the planet that you would work for free for, but when you start your business and when you start a new business, be prepared for some ramen noodle nights. 
Okay, so number two is the financial instability that comes with owning a business. There will be some months where you will make more than you ever have. There will be other months where you make absolutely nothing. It is a roller coaster of emotions and finances. So be prepared for the first few months to not have any idea if you'll get another dollar. And of course, as a new business, you will need constant reinvestment before being able to pay yourself if you truly want to grow this business. Because opening a new business, you will not know your sales 100% of the time. You will not have any flow. You will not know the expenses that come with owning a new business. You won't have an idea if there will be any profit at the end of the month. And unfortunately for many business owners, there's no profit for the first one to two, even three years. So you really have to have a savings nest piled up or a supportive partner with a stable income to supplement this dream or new business. So essentially what I'm saying is, if you need money, it, like you need oxygen in the air, this is not something you are able to do right now. Save up enough money to last you six months to a year, and then you can start a new business. Because unfortunately, it really boils down to if you're not making enough money to cover your personal bills, then you should have never started a business in the first place. This leads us into our next point. Number three is the emotional instability that comes with owning a business. You will be tied to your business much more personally than you will to a job. At least that's my opinion. Because you started this thing from scratch, everything relies on you, every fine detail that you've built is your achievement, your legacy, and when it goes south, that's when you tend to take it a little harder than you ever have. The unfortunate part of, with this is the highs can be very, very high, but the lows are very low. So when you have a consistent amount of things going wrong in your business, there's really no one to turn to or to blame but yourself. And unfortunately, this tends to be the biggest complaint I've heard from business owners around me is 99% of the population has no idea what you're going through because legitimately they go to work, get a paycheck and they have a very stable income. So for example, even things like a bad Google review have kept us up late at night wondering, you know, where we went wrong or if we deserve that or how can we make it better. Things like, you know, a bad sales day you'll take home with you. Things such as, you know, broken equipment or improvements that need more money or your rent going up are things that really mess with your emotions. So this is why, you know, mental health is such an important part of being in business and truly having someone to talk to and bounce ideas off or bounce problems off can benefit you in the long run. Whereas, you know, trying to do everything yourself and dealing with things on your own ends up piling up and affecting your future more than you ever thought. Next, we have the fear of failure. And this is something that you will experience Throughout being in business, throughout having you know your own entrepreneur entrepreneurial journey, is you'll always be running from that doomsday where it all falls apart and you end up having to go do something you don't want to do to make a living again. And I've talked to many business owners, and I can tell you the amount of times that I've heard that people are at a bad month in their business, for example and they believe it's all coming crashing down. So even with six years in business of experience that I've had, I still will have a bad day or a bad week and it feels like it's the end of the world, that everything's turning around, the, the, the game's over, you know, we, we need to figure out a new plan. And I can tell you that speaking to other business owners this is a common theme that you experience. You think it's the last month, everybody gave up on you, the, con the dream's over, the concept got stale, you didn't pivot fast enough, and you know it's all coming crashing down from your eyes. 
And this is something that I've even discussed with my dad who's been a barber for almost 40 years now. When he has a bad day, it honestly feels like the business is crumbling and nothing's the same anymore. Even at that point, he's worried about, you know, am I gonna be, you know, is this gonna be my future? Is this my new normal sales day? Is this how it's going to be for the, for the next, you know, five, 10 years? And obviously this fear of failure stems from somewhere. As entrepreneur.com suggests, 20% of all businesses fail within their first year 30% of all businesses fail within their second year, and 50% of businesses fail within five years. So when you factor in that the average entrepreneur knows the statistics pretty well, they always kind of have it in their mind that they could be part of that statistic. Being able to overcome that fear of failure is something that I think comes with enough time, enough savings, enough you know support behind you where even if your business fails you don't feel that shame or guilt or anger that came with it and you know truthfully being able to pay off any debts really takes away a fear of failure because you don't have you know that much pressure to pay you know other people off like you would if you have business debt and lastly, the recession or the state of the economy really affects your business. You know, when you're dealing with people who don't have as much disposable income or don't, you know, feel they need to spend on the certain business you're in anymore, or they don't have the funds to spend on the business that you're in anymore, then you start seeing your sales drop, even at no fault of your own. So the state of the world has a direct access on your income and your business health. For example, with our grocery store, the prices have gone up maybe 50% since we started. So everything we're doing costs more to create products or put products on the shelf. And consumers are spending a lot less because they have less disposable income to buy specialty products. And that's where we really excel. We were doing all of our gluten, free items, our vegan items, our keto items, and people who were trying those items out or using those items from us simply do not have the same money to spend anymore. They have other things to take care of, higher rents, higher mortgages, higher interest rates, higher you know, car payments, and those specialty products that we tend to carry more of take a hit first. Of aside from the basic necessities of grocery. And when families have less money to spend, they tend to cut corners, they tend to find deals, they tend to, you know, eat out less, they tend to buy, you know, higher end products less. And that really took a, that really takes a hit on our business because we were at essentially a boutique grocery store with slightly higher quality items that do cost a bit more in general than your big box stores. So to give you an example, we used to have a customer transaction value of $28 per person, and now we're floating around $18 per person. It may not seem like a big difference on the, you know, just the spectrum of value between 28 and 18, but when you take 100 customers who used to spend 28 and now those same 100 customers spend 18, it really has a difference in your bottom line at the end of the month. So at the end of the day, with all things considered and all the things I've mentioned, I wouldn't change this journey at all. I don't regret doing this. It opened a lot of different doors for us. Yes, there's going to be tough days. Yes, there's going to be months that we don't take home much money. And there's going to be months that, you know, you feel on top of the world. This is how it's going to be. It's an emotional roller coaster of business. And this is why I make these videos so you guys understand exactly, you know, what most of us are going through, what 99% of people experience when they start their first business. And just to be straight and transparent as much as possible. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I hope you have a good one. I'm going to end this one here. Have a good night and success with all your business journeys.